Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be sharing a imaging session capturing the Bubble Nebula NGC 7635. If you like these types of videos, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Also, please leave a comment below if you liked seeing these types of imaging capturing videos. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Hey, good evening. I think we're going to go after the uh, Bubble Nebula tonight. And I figured I'd do a recording session of a uh, live session. I brought up K-Stars, and I already have the equipment set up, and everything is aligned the way it should. I think we're going to go after the Bubble Nebula tonight. Um, it's still a little bit low. So we're going to go for that. I'm going to go ahead and... I've already started K-Stars. So we're going to go ahead and bring up Ecos. And this will be a perfect opportunity to test my... Uh, my indie server I did some changes and by the way I, um, I might be supplying an image for the people who are interested in the indie server anyway uh, let's go ahead and bring up the tool and here it is I'm gonna go ahead and start and like always I'm gonna check to make sure the smart focus the uh, guide camera is set up and the main camera setup as well as the mount. Everything looks good on the smart focus. I'm going to just double check a couple of things here and that looks fine. I'm going to close that out. So we brought up Ecos and as you could see I was kind of interrupted. I figured I'd make a good good session anyway video. So let's go ahead and bring up the observation planner again and I've the way you would find an object is you would click uh, find, go ahead and search for bubble, hit OK, and it'll bring it up into this alternate name field. And if you click on that, it gives you all the necessary information. It tells you when the, uh, when the object will be at the meridian um, and the condition of uh, dawn or dusk. So it gives you an idea of the local observing time that you might have. Uh, you could also, from this menu, if everything's set up and ECOS is running, you could also select Scope. And what that will do, and I'll move this out of the way, is it'll, it'll move the telescope over to where the object is. So let's bring back from the other screen the ECOS, and we'll go ahead and solve and capture for, the, for this image. Now, I am using an Optolong L enhanced filter, so it's a little more difficult to deal with um, for focusing as well as is doing um, plate solving. So what I had to do is I had to increase the exposure and I need to increase the gain. And I'm going to kind of max out the gain for the uh, camera. And let's just double check we're on the primary scope and we're on the right camera and we're going to do a solve and capture. And as you can see the image is up there and it is, they say it's within, it must have been solving for a star. That's interesting. But it will give you an opportunity how you can um, center in on an object. So if we click here, let me see here. Uh, what is it doing here? Here it is. Um, huh. That's interesting. Why is that not allowing me to select that? Hmm. Let's do another. Target is within an acceptable range. Well, this is strange. This is an interesting issue. Um, I should be able to select this center telescope and then click on the object to center. It's not allowing me to do that, so therefore, I'm going to go a different way. I noticed that when I called this up, it's a little bit off. I'm going to go and 
go to the bubble nebula on K stars imagery and I'm going to go to that image using the go to. Then what I'm going to do is do another plate solve and let's see how this does. Because if you notice that I just use this, this is an interesting thing. This will be good for somebody to look at. Um, it must have picked the star, not really the bubble nebula. I mean, it was close, but I, I don't know what happened there. That was, that's an interesting issue. Obviously, it was off the target, and the object was trying to plate solve this for a star. Okay, that's much better. It's within target. It looks good. It's centered. Um, let's go ahead and start the guiding process. And I have everything all set up, so all I should need to do is hit guide. Double check. I always forget to double check the bin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit guide, and it'll go through the, the calibration. All right, it's completed the calibration and auto guiding is starting and we'll just monitor here to see if we're doing okay with actually guiding. Um, one other interesting thing you could do is you could check the gal calibration steps. You could see how well it calibrated and what it actually did as far as the movement. Um, I think the documentation goes into more detail of what the items here represent. Let's go back to the plot. It's guiding okay. So let's go ahead and set up the camera and I should have done this before and I forgot but we want to set up the temperature. I'm going to go to a minus 10 tonight and we'll go ahead and hit the check mark here which tells uh, Ecos that it has to be at minus 10 degrees before it'll start shooting. Um, I'm going to do some house cleaning as this thing is is uh, ticking away here and, and bringing down the temperature. Uh, and I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to pause this. All right, we're almost there. Kind of house cleaning I did was I just made sure that the Astro working directory is cleaned up. What I normally do is each observing session, I'll rename the Astro working uh, folder or directory to a different name, usually the, based on the time, uh, uh, date of the session. And then I'll go ahead and, and uh, create a copy the template over into KSTARS and then rename the template to Astro working. Uh, it's, it's convenient and um, it works well. I am turning off focusing limits on this. Because I'm using the filter, it's very difficult for the focuser to manage the, uh, the focus for that. It, it will work, but I've found that by using a focusing mask and manually doing it, it works pretty well and I could get uh, pretty good focus using that technique. And, um, Kind of wish the autofocuser would work a little bit better, uh, but I have to capture for at least 20 seconds using the filter, and it's grainy because the gain's turned up very high, and it just is has all sorts of problems with that. A uh, solution to that might be, and I have to figure that out, or I should figure that out, is I could use the uh, take the filter out and use a standard focus sequence and then put the filter back in and put an offset in for the focusing value. But again, that's not works very well for automation. So I'm still thinking about that and working that out. This works okay for, for what I'm doing now. And of course, I've overshot the temperature. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and set up the exposure. We're going to have a 120 second exposure of this. We're going to shoot 30 captures and adjust the gain for Unity 100, and we'll keep the standard 10. 
everything else looks good. Um, let's go back to our guide, see how we're, we're doing. Yeah, a little bit of a problem out there, but that's okay. Guiding is okay tonight, I've, I, but this is acceptable guiding for my, my telescope and mount. So let's go back here. By the way, you can see in the main, um, um, the main screen here for the profile screen, you can, um, you could click here and you could vary the, uh, oh, that's strange. It's not doing that now. That's, that's interesting. Usually if you press this, you could get these various screens here. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Hmm. We'll have to look at that again later. That's an interesting, uh, I don't know if it's a bug. By the way, this is kind of, I'm running the latest software in this build, so I'm still kind of, it's a little bit different, I think. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're continuing on. Let's see how our camera temperature is doing. It's 11, 10. I think we're good. Sequence looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and add the sequence. And I'll add the uh, dark frames. I have a dark frame library all set, and I have a flat frame uh, library all set, so I don't necessarily have to take dark frames or flat files and bias right now. So we're going to go ahead and hit the start sequence, and that'll take off. Go over to the main uh, setup menu, and we're seeing we're starting to do the countdown for the capture. I'm also testing uh, a Wi-Fi issue. I've been having problems with the Wi-Fi connection stopping. And on my Raspberry Pi, I have an option of using either the Wi-Fi at 5 gigs or having a hardwire connection, Ethernet cable connection. So here's the bubble nebula. It's nicely focused too, much better than the first attempt that I did. So, hmm, I don't know why it took so long to download. I think one of the things we could take a look at here, if I can find it. Ah, uh, signal quality kind of stinks right now so that might explain it uh let me i'm going to jump out of here i'm going to pause this for a second i'm going to see about adding the uh, the internet cable just in case i lose connection all right we're on our second image and i did plug in the cable so we have <laughs> just notice this satellite came across here eh, never never fails to have a satellite these days cross your image the other thing I really have to say is I really love this Optolong L enhanced filter uh, it's nice because of the light pollution in where I'm at and I've been getting some fabulous images in both uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So uh, it's kind of a, a fun filter to have, and I'm kind of glad I, I got that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and I'll get back to you guys if there's something interesting that comes up. All right, we're still continuing to capture here. We're at... Uh, we just downloaded the ninth image of the series. Guiding's good. Uh, I just checked outside. Looks like the fog is 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 <laughs> is behaving itself. So nothing nothing new to report. I'll check back in as things progress here, but I don't see any issues. Uh, I've actually been doing other things and letting this thing just run its course. So anyway, we'll check back later. All right, I thought I'd bring you up to speed here. We're having problems with the guiding right now. Um, as you can see in the chart here, it's, uh, it's failing miserably. 
So looking at this, first thing I'm going to do, I, the image looks okay. And it's being captured here. Um, I am going to stop guiding and then restart guiding. And if that doesn't work, then the next step is to reset That's funny. It 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 took off work working great. So it makes you wonder if there's some sort of a bug going on here. Let's go back into our capture status here. Uh captures aborted. We're to go ahead and start the capturing again. It should take off where it's left off. So we're at uh nine and counting down. Let's go back over to our main screen here and we're seeing we're guiding us just fine now so that's really strange that all of a sudden we were having such a bad time guiding if we go back in the history here you can see it's just having a terrible time um, with the whole thing <laughs> I mean, it, it it got goofy here, recovered. The last time, I mean, the groupings were good. We go here, though. We're starting to get further and further out. So that was a failure. That's a failure. And I'm not sure what these middle delays are, because usually it doesn't... Well, it's something to think about. And it's the middle of guiding or checking. So anyway, that's one way to check history and what's going on. Let's go back up into the guide. And it's nicely packaged right now. I'm not seeing any issues, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, guide limits are pretty high. Now it's probably from a previous night. I didn't check that. Uh, so the fact that it was having problems with guiding kind of surprises me. Now I'm going to go ahead and go out and check on the telescope, make sure there's nothing like a snag line or binding, but there really shouldn't be. Um, Well, the exposure looks okay. We're in dithering. It's completed dithering and it's starting the guide again. Let's go back over here. We're doing the countdown. All right, I thought I'd show you that. Um, it seems like eh, it's okay. It's a little bit off. It, it's been floating right around this area, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to bring you that, show you that, that there is a guiding issue with the scope. And um, all right, we're at the last uh, 30, image 30 here. Just finishing up that. And the funny thing is I haven't had a problem with guiding ever since... We did the uh, guide reset. As you can see, it's been holding in pretty well in the center. And as if we go back here, you'll see that uh, the patterns are pretty consistent throughout the uh, rest of the guiding. So that's that's good news. I am going to go ahead. I just checked outside the fog. It's not materializing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, capture some more images here. And the way I'm going to do it is I am just going to reset this job here. So I'll highlight this, hit the reset, and it'll ask me if I want to reset the job. I'll continue. And then I'll start again. And I'll let that go. It's getting, it's not too late yet, but I kind of want to make an early evening to it. So I'm going to continue this for uh, a number of images, probably another 10 or more images. And um, at least I'll have a good uh, amount of images to process.
And this is a fairly bright nebula in hydrogen alpha, so as you can see, it's probably going to be a very interesting uh, image once it's processed.